Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So lately I've been working on a 2022 revamp version of my What If Xbox Acquired Everyone video since a lot of people have been asking me to do exactly that. And while I've been doing research for that video, I sort of fell into a chain of thought that I think deserves a video all of its own about how not just Xbox, but all of Microsoft could, with a single acquisition, skyrocket the entire company into a whole new echelon. So let's ask the question, what if Xbox bought Warner Brothers Discovery? So to explain why I think that this would be such a huge deal, first I want to sort of establish why I think WB would want to sell in the first place, right? And the most obvious answer to that is because they already said at one point that they did, right? Now granted, that was some time ago, and they did sort of backtrack it since then, but what have we seen since that time? Warner Brothers Discovery has been completely spun off from AT&T to be its own company, which some people would say means that it shows that they want to govern themselves for a while and sort of become their own unique brand again. But realistically, all that that means is that now it's cheaper than ever. It would be easier to buy. You could buy Warner Brothers Discovery now without also having to become a cell phone provider. You understand? So while I think that they may run themselves for a while, you know, they've even said that they want to do some things that I'm very hopeful that they do, like revamp their DC content, because I think we can all be honest and say the DCEU could use a good reboot. Um, it seems like they are very likely to end up acquired at some point in the next, I'll say, five years. And now it's equally, if not more, likely that at least at first, Xbox would acquire just the video game section of Warner Brothers Discovery and then form some kind of exclusive agreement so that Xbox is the only brand that can make Warner Brothers and Discovery properties on the video game front and Warner Brothers Discovery is the only brand that can create Xbox, Bethesda, and Activision Blizzard content on the television and film side of things, which even on that level would be a huge move for both Warner Brothers and Xbox. But if they were to go that way, Microsoft doesn't strike me as the kind of company to leave food on the plate, especially when the food is that good. So I feel like even if they started that way, they would eventually end up acquiring the whole thing. But let's talk about why Xbox, or Microsoft rather, would be wanting to acquire Warner Brothers Discovery. And I feel like one of the first questions a lot of you are going to be asking is, can they even afford to buy Warner Brothers Discovery? And from what I can tell, the answer is unequivocally yes, because the market cap is somewhere between 45 and $60 billion for WBD. And we know from the Activision Blizzard acquisition that that is a squeeze that Microsoft is willing to make as long as the juice is good enough. And this juice is amazing, right? Let's look at the game studios that they would be getting. That's probably the most relevant to this channel and to you who are a video game audience, right? So first of all, they get NetherRealm, who is of course the Mortal Kombat and Injustice studio, and Xbox could really use a first party fighting game. They don't have one and it's a, a niche market that they for sure want to be getting into. Then you've got Rocksteady, who of course made all the Arkham games except Origins, and are currently working on that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. Uh, so an absolutely stellar studio there. Uh, you've got Traveler's Tales, who makes all of the Lego games, which is absolutely huge with the child audience, that Xbox has been saying they've been wanting to make more child-friendly content, since a lot of the things they're known for are guns with chainsaws on it and people shooting aliens, right? So, then you get Avalanche, who is currently working on Hogwarts Legacy, a game that I feel like we can all agree to be excited about. Uh, and there's Monolith, who of course made all of the uh, Shadow of War games, the, the Middle Earth games. You've got uh, a couple of smaller studios. There's WB Montreal, who is probably the biggest of the smaller studios, being that they made Arkham Origins and are currently working on Gotham Knight, which I'm very excited for. 
Uh, and then you've got WB Boston, WB New York, and WB San Diego, all of which look like they're, for the most part, just strictly support studios. Boston being maybe the outlier there, since they have in the past worked on MMOs, um, but now they seem to do mobile games, which, I don't know, isn't something that I'm excited for, but it's a support studio nonetheless. But outside of just the manpower that they'd be getting, there's also, we have to talk about IP, because that's the big kicker for this sale, is the IP that Xbox and Microsoft would get access to. You've got, of course, the entire DC library. I'm talking Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Green Lantern, all of them, the whole Justice League, which I know that if you've only been looking at the recent DCEU movies probably doesn't sound that big, but trust me, those heroes have the exact chance of being as huge as the MCU if they were just put into better hands. (laughs) Then you've got Lord of the Rings, one of the biggest franchises of all time, Harry Potter, Mortal Kombat. On the video game front, you've got some older forgotten things like Condemned and Fear. You've got uh, the AEW Wrestling IP, because that is owned uh, because that show is on uh, TBS, which is owned by Warner Media. Uh, then you've got all of the Cartoon Network IPs. I'm talking uh, Cartoon Network and Boomerang, rather. So uh, Scooby Doo, Samurai Jack, Ben 10, Adventure Time, Kids Next Door, on and on and on. Just all of them. Uh, you're telling me that you can't you can't imagine Double Fine or Rare making a good game out of one of those. Uh, then you've got New Line Cinema who are the people who own the IPs for the entire Conjuring universe. Imagine what a team like uh, Tango Gameworks could do with that. Uh, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, Then you've got Warner Brothers Pictures themselves, who of course own the IP for things like Beetlejuice, Blade Runner, Dirty Harry, Nancy Drew, Gremlins, King Kong, Mad Max, The Matrix, The NeverEnding Story, Willy Wonka. You've got Warner Brothers Television, who owns things like Chuck, The Dukes of Hazard, Supernatural, V. The, all of these lists go on so much longer than what I'm reading. These are just some that I've picked out because I think maybe you could make a good game out of them. And then you've got HBO, who of course is the owner of Westworld, Succession, True Detective, Game of Thrones, Boardwalk Empire, The Sopranos. <laughs> there is so much IP that Xbox could get access to in this deal. And beyond that, there's also the idea of how much IP Warner Brothers Discovery could get in exchange, right? They could get access to every single video game franchise that Xbox owns, including all of Bethesda, all of Activision. And I know that people don't really want to talk about television and movies and video games, or at least they didn't back in 2013 when everyone wanted to rag on Xbox for that TV, TV, TV conference. But what is the hottest thing in video game, in, in television and film right now? It is video game adaptations. Look at the Halo show, The Last of Us show, the Sonic movie, the Detective Pikachu movie. Twisted Metal is getting a show for some reason. Gears of War is getting a movie or a TV show. Mass Effect is getting shopped around. Now, all of a sudden, everyone wants to talk about television and film when they're talking about video game properties. This is a deal that facilitates that like nothing else possibly could. And that's why earlier I said this wouldn't be Xbox buying Warner Brothers Discovery, it would be Microsoft buying Warner Brothers Discovery because this deal would be so much bigger than Xbox, so much bigger than the potential in the video game space, right? Think about it. If you bought Warner Brothers Discovery, you are getting HBO Max, which is the third largest streaming service on the planet, only behind Disney Plus and Netflix, right? So immediately you jump straight into the upper echelon of streaming television services, right? You get a ton of TV channels. You get the CW, Cartoon Network, uh, including Adult Swim and Toonami. You get TNT, TBS, Food Network, TLC, Discovery, The Travel Channel, Animal Planet, HGTV. I bet most of you didn't know that Warner Brothers owned all of those channels. Turns out they do. (laughs) And there's a bunch of other smaller ones, like local ones, that I didn't even bother to list. They also own Rooster Teeth, which I didn't know, so that would be really funny. 
because obviously there's there's roots there with things like red versus blue being sort of what had rooster teeth take off in the first place and it would be really funny to see some of the guys who work there uh that uh, just become microsoft employees uh just it'd be it'd be very funny um then you also get that entire film and television library that you could just stick onto the Xbox store basically for free, uh, immediately boosting that up. Because I, I know for some reason recently I heard, uh, I, I forget which podcast it was on, that someone was saying that the, that the library on Xbox for TV and film wasn't good enough, which I thought was ridiculous, but whatever. There's your fix right there. Um and uh, a, a lot of people are going to probably uh, use the detraction of, like, what does Microsoft know about running a, a television or film production company? And the answer is they, absolutely nothing. They don't. But that's the beauty of it is they, it's not like Phil Spencer has to go make a movie. He's buying all of the people who make these things. All he has to do is let them do what they do and maybe every now and then overlook it and be like, actually, Batman vs. Superman was shit. Can we not do that again? Right? Like, that's all it is. Is he can basically just, like, Sadia Nadella can just sit there like an armchair quarterback for this. If he even wants to do that. Because honestly, with the exception of the DCEU and arguably the CW channel, um, which is pretty cringe but also very successful, uh, Warner Brothers is doing great in television and film. They don't need any guidance, right? You look at, like... All the stuff that they're doing on Discovery, all the stuff that they're doing with Cartoon Network, and people love that stuff, right? There's no reason to come in and change any of it. So, no need for Saudi and Adela to need to know how to run a production company, right? Uh, then, of course, you get tons of profits from the IP utilization on both sides. You know, you get all of the funds from having an HBO quality halo show going on to hbo max instead of the let's admit it not all that great version that we got over on paramount i think it is right now right imagine that but just boost the budget by like five times because that's what hbo does with their shows you think halo is not going to be worth that level of budget and then of course you know all the profits from things like batman being an xbox exclusive right you've got uh <laughs> It's just an absolutely massive deal. And the the other bonus of it is that there's no reason why the government would have any reason to block it. There, there's no leg to stand on for them to call it a monopoly because you can't say that Microsoft has a monopoly in television and film because right now, as we speak, they do not exist in television and film. So the only monopoly they could have in that space would be if Warner Brothers Discovery already was a monopoly there, which they are very clearly not because they are at best the third highest ranked streaming service and a bunch of channels that appeal to different audiences, right? Like, it's, it's a win-win all around. And the biggest part is this is a thing that boosts them up. Microsoft and Xbox in particular has been talking about how their competition is not Nintendo and Sony. They're talking about competing with people like Apple, Amazon, Google, and Disney. And if Microsoft were to go through with a deal of this level, this magnitude, they are immediately up on that level, if not even a little bit higher than some of those, just because of the power that they have with things like the office suite things like the their video game brand right this is a deal that would turn microsoft into one of the biggest corporations on the planet and while i think some people would be afraid of that you have to keep in mind that microsoft is consistently voted as one of the top 10 companies to work for on the planet so i think maybe we can just Except the fact that if we have to have a company that's going to grow to this size, Microsoft is probably the one to do it. But like I said at the beginning of the video, this was just sort of an idea that grew up in my head while I was doing research for a different thing. So I might be completely off base. I don't think I am, but I might be. So let me know what you guys think about a potential Microsoft purchase of Warner Brothers in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this sort of content and want to see more like this from me, Hit subscribe, share it with a friend, you know. Word of mouth is the best form of marketing that anybody can ask for, and you guys are my means of doing that. 
uh, hit me up on Twitter at Daniel J. McG, especially if you're a content creator. I'm looking to do some more collaborative style work. I've been doing some of that lately with a couple of content creator friends of mine, and every single time it's been a, a ton of fun. So I'm, I'm really looking to do some more of that, hopefully with some of you guys. Um, but until next time, I'll see you around.